Thank you. So I was asked to talk about the commissioning challenges for new models. Um, I run a very small company that's trying to do nurse-led, run a nurse-led managing team in Cambridgeshire. Um, and so what I'm talking about is the challenges of commissioning a new model in the first instance, but once you've actually secured that contract in the first instance, how do you sustain it beyond the pilot period? Um, for us, we're trapped in the short-term commissioning cycles within public services. We tend to look at things in a year. And in terms of new models, you cannot underestimate the time it takes to implement a new model and then embed the change um, and realise the benefits. And at the very minimum, you'd need something like two years, but realistically, much longer than that, to truly begin to see the benefits, particularly when there's cultural change involved as well. Um, the other issue is that for the services that we're providing, there are many partners in the system. And um, to, to invest to save, how do you identify who is going to put up the money? Um, and there's usually a lot of debate about what the... Um, the outcomes will be, and therefore who will benefit from the savings made. Um, and it's really difficult to tell what those um, savings will be, because actually in multi-systems, you know, the acute, system, the acute um, service will benefit from reduction in admissions. Um, the county council might uh, benefit from reduction in the d dependence on dom long-term domiciliary care or movement into residential care. GPs might benefit from reduction in appointment times. Community services, reduction in the amount of visits and the length of visits. Um, and so it's often very difficult to agree who will be the people who put up the money in the first place or if they're putting in, or everybody putting into the pot, what proportion of money people will put into the pot. The other debate is, will cash actually be re re released from new models of care? And the, because systems are so complex, actually cash is often not released, rather capacity. So it makes it easier to manage existing demand but cash isn't released back into the system. So when you've got systems that are financially challenged, then again, agreeing who will put in the money or how much money or can we find the extra money to make that change um, it sometimes doesn't happen when you can't identify actually cash release. The other um, problem is that once you've actually secured investment, and piloted something or tested something for a period of time, then in terms of evaluation and agreement to sustain that and um, embed that in the long term depends on how the quantitative and qualitative evaluation. And actually, the, the systems we've got in place in the first place, we find it very difficult to um, benchmark what services already exist because we... Um, don't, in the community particularly, the NHS uses block contracts, and so we don't know what the, the unit cost is. Um, and there are a lot of hidden costs related to the way we commission. So when we commission on um, numbers, the quantity of um, visits that we make, then actually, um, for example, if you are looking after somebody with a leg ulcer and you're doing a visit twice a week for a year and you are commissioned on the, the number of visits you make as opposed to actually curing the leg ulcer. So if you spend a half hour visit twice a week or do you spend three hours up front for the first six weeks to really understand what the underlying causes of that problem is and cure the leg ulcer. So you use a lot of time up front um, which is deemed expensive, but actually you prevent the long-term um, 
the, the duplication of a visit. And that, those um, costs are lost in the way we currently commission. And therefore, when you come to, um, to evaluate new services, um, they look very expensive. Also, there's the perceived risk of new organisational models. So we've talked today about self-managed teams and um, there are, there's a lot of suspicion in public services around the new models, concerns around governance and regulation, and small um, organisations doing something different um, come across political issues, the perceived risks of privatisation, concern about sustainability, and just the devolved power to new organisations doing things from a human perspective, from a personalised perspective from the ground up, rather than the large organisations doing things from top down. So the challenge, I guess, is how do we do things differently? How do we commission differently to enable new um, models to start off and then be sustained over a significant period of time so we can genuinely make a change to the way we deliver services. And really, um, uh, Toby mentioned uh, about the importance of building trusting relationships in the system so we can take risks with how we um, commission, risks um, with how we invest the money and um, really give, give organisations time to show the impact of doing things differently. And obviously, most, of the, most systems, well, all systems suffer these from these problems, but many systems have successfully managed to do things differently. And we've heard examples of people doing things differently within social care and housing. I'd love to hear whether have people successfully managed to do things differently within the NHS. Thank you.